Hello everyone, it's Chaplain April. I'm going to do a quick review on The Shack. It's not going to be long. <laughs> uh, so this is the book, The Shack, um, written by William Paul Young. And um, as I said in the video I just did that I was so excited to go hear him speak one night and he was speaking at a church in the town that I lived in and uh, you know and talking about this book and um, I didn't know what the book was about I had no idea I just know I like to listen to off okay so I was so excited to hear the author speak and because um, I knew have known for so long that I wanted to write a book and I always love going to hear authors speak you know so I go to any that I can and this was right close to home and so I went and um, I was actually so disappointed because I thought the book was about this guy's um, personal life and as a missionary kid I love hearing about other missionary kids I try to meet as many as I can I did my thesis on it um, on being a third culture child so I thought ooh this is gonna be really good because this is gonna be about this guy's life and he's gonna correlate it with his faith and it's all gonna be so grand and then I found out that this is a fictional book and it wasn't about his life at all and then um, I wasn't really sure about his faith after I heard him speak so then I read the book you know and um, I mean the book it's very well written as a novel and as a fictional thing um, but as far as the faith part in the book I personally it it clashed with me with my spirit I just did not agree with what I was reading in the book as far as the faith part I mean the faith part in the book the, the Bible based part or the Bible parts were not really correlating for me so I never said anything to anyone about it but then um, after I met my mentor and everything I asked her I said I don't know why I just never really liked the book and and is it just me and she said no 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 no. and there's a lot of people that feel like it was blasphemous and that it's heresy so um, I did some research on that and there is so much if you look on the internet and you look up you know the shack blasphemy you'll get tons of articles and the shack heresy you'll get tons of articles so I'm just gonna um, go through a little bit on this one uh, website it's called compass international so if you want to look up the article yourself you can so it's talking about why the shack is blasphemous and it says it is a well-written Christian fiction book it sold over 20 million copies um, due to the intense story for most readers it causes a flood of emotions to well up inside masking the theological errors throughout the book so that's what I was saying is that it is a really good story but if it was just a standalone story without trying to be biblical then it would have been fine but the biblical parts really do not they don't jive with the Bible itself they're very much outside of it so one of I'm just gonna go down the things that they're saying in here the shack presents an unbiblical picture of God well because it is personified by a um, large black lady and of course everyone has always associated God with a masculine um, name and so I don't know if you would call that heresy or not or just a different way to portray God so I think that some Christians look at it as just a different way uh, to look at things but if you try to match it up with with the Bible uh, it's going to be very difficult because um, we knew, we do know that God has male and female attributes but he is never portrayed as a female so that's a controversial thing um, the shack presents an unbiblical picture of the Holy Spirit okay so the Holy Spirit is personified by an Asian woman so in the Bible God and the Holy Spirit never become human Jesus is the only 
person of the Trinity of the Godhead that ever becomes human. So that is not a biblical thing uh, for the, the Holy Spirit to be portrayed as a human. Okay, um, it presents an unbiblical picture of Jesus. Um, and they're saying that because in the shack, uh, and it even gives the page number, page 99 to 100 says, Jesus as a human being had no power within himself to heal anyone. And that is completely not true if you look in the Bible. Jesus had all the power to heal. Uh, you know, Christians believe that Jesus was 100% um, human and 100% God. So, not 50-50. So, he had all the power that comes with God. Jesus had it also. Uh, the shack presents an unbiblical picture of salvation. So, a lot of people are saying that, they're, that this is more like universalism. Um, and universalism, uh, or pluralism, it teaches that uh, there are many ways to God. Apparently, it says in there on page 182 with regards to salvation those who love me come from every system that exists they are Buddhists or Mormons or Muslims and you know there is some truth in that you know anyone can get saved anyone can come to Christ um, from any of those religions but they would not remain in that religion so it's more it's having more of a universalist view of salvation um, so that is there's there's a really fine line there and you know the Bible says that um, Jesus I, says he's the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but through me what the shack is saying is that um, those in the faith are indistinguishable they have no difference um, so it and it will say I have no desire to make them Christian uh, and then Jesus says in the book when someone says, does that mean all roads lead to you? Jesus says, most roads don't lead anywhere. And that is not what the Bible says. I'm sorry. It says, enter through the narrow gate. The gate is wide and the way is broad. That leads to destruction. There are many who enter through it. This is saying, the shack places an emphasis on your relationship with God while downplaying proper doctrine. How can you have a true relationship with God without scripturally understanding God's truth as revealed in his word? Uh, and uh, the shack embraces pantheism, which that's scary. Pantheism is the false teaching that God is everything and everything is God. Trees, rocks, animals, the sun, pets, people are all gods. But even though God may live in a person or be present, that doesn't mean he is a person or a rock. Don't confuse this with God being omnipresent. So, you know, we don't believe in pantheism. You know, everything is not God. The chair and, the, and my house and all these things are not God. God is present in all of those places and all of those things. So that's the difference. That, that is a new age principle, that God is in everything. And, you know, Christians say God is everywhere. God is here and, and, and present. But he's not in everything he's in people he when you ask him into your heart then he's in you in your spirit uh, so there is a big difference and you know someone that is not very um, familiar with you know the de depths of the Bible might just read the book and think that ah, it's fictional and oh I like the way they portray God and just kind of on the surface but if you go a little bit deeper and you'll find out that um, the Bible and the shack do not really mesh. They do not really uh, match up. So I would not recommend it as a book to read as far as, you know, theologically. You know, I would, you know, if you read it and you want to know what it's about and you like the story, that's one thing. But the theology is very off. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit of the back of this. You know, you know what's interesting is that I was just doing a book a book haul, and Eugene Peterson, who did the Message Bible, you know, endorses this book. So I was like surprised. Oh my God! It says this book has the potential to do for our generation what John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress did for his. It's that good. I'm like, what? So, uh, yeah, I don't agree with that. 
In a world where religion seems to grow increasingly irrelevant, the shack wrestles with the timeless question, where is God in a world so filled with unspeakable pain? The answers Matt gets will astound you and perhaps transform you as much as it did him. You'll want everyone you know to read this book. <sighs> okay, so I wanted to read a little bit about the author because as I said before, he's a missionary kid and that's why I was so excited. But um, he has some really dark things that happened in his life. So I wish he would write a biography so I could read about him more about his life. I don't really know what denomination he is and, and all of that. So I, don't, I, I really would like to know where his beliefs stand, his personal beliefs. That I cannot figure out. But in his life, he, had, um, he was sexually abused on the mission field, so that is very hard to even imagine uh, and very sad. And um, so that's where a lot of the pain, the painful things in the book come from. And then he had an affair which caused a lot of problems in his marriage. Wrote the novel as a Christmas gift for his children. And, you know, he self-published it. He went to, like, Office Depot and, and got, like, 15 copies and then was just giving them out. And somehow someone got hold of it and wanted to publish it and make it into a movie. So it's even in a, it, it was even made into a movie. I have not seen the movie. I have no desire to see the movie because, to me, theologically, it doesn't add up. So why would I want to do that? I have no interest. He's being interviewed. And, um... So the, the, the story is the shack in the woods where the main character meets God is a metaphor for the house people build inside themselves to store secrets, addiction, and shame. Uh, he says, part of being human is learning to speak the language of loss. Loss is something we have in common. It's way more common than religion. Uh, okay. So someone asks him, tell me the story of your upbringing. And he says, my parents were missionaries. I was a year old when we moved to the Netherlands, New Guinea, where we ran into a tribal culture that had never seen a white person and we didn't speak their language. I had a difficult relationship with my dad who was very broken before the time I showed up. Sexual abuse was the dominant story of my childhood as early as five years old and continued at boarding school where I went when I was six. Those experiences will devastate and fracture the soul. So I don't know if his dad abused him. I do know that some people in this tribe, I guess in the boarding school did. This happened in the midst of the wonder of growing up inside another culture. It's a torn world where you have both wonderful experience, experience of belonging, and at the same time get fractured deeply. And this person says, how did that fracturing shape you? Loss becomes sort of the normal. You unconsciously just express that into the world that's around you. At some point, you become a breaker yourself. Broken people break things. The skills you learn to survive will become the things that keep you from a relationship that might heal you. That's the irony of dealing with these kinds of losses. You're emo emotionally detached and you know how to leave. You become an expert in leaving, but you speak the right language. You say you leave because God is calling you somewhere else. So then he talks about his wife, how she uh, helped him, inspire him to write. The weekend in the shack represents an 11 year journey for me unraveling my stuff and dealing with it. The first thing I did besides tell my wife all my secrets, which devastated her, was look up a counselor in the yellow pages. I found a place and spent the next nine months with a counselor. What did you learn through the un unraveling, 11 year unraveling? that you have to ask the hard questions and work it out a day at a time, but you can't do it alone. You want God to heal you without anyone else finding out about it, and that's just not what happens. We are as sick as the secrets we keep. The journey to get the place where you have no secrets is arduous and very embarrassing and very devastating. You have to take risks and learn how to trust. I stopped trying to please God and everybody and began a journey of learning how to trust. Let's talk about the shack. Why did you start to write? The shack was written out of healing, not as a part of it. It was an expression of healing. I don't think I could have written prior to that. I've always been a writer, but never had a clue that anyone outside my circle um, would care about it. 
So the loss between Mac and Missy, which are characters in the book, uh, was the loss between him, the author, and his and the child within him. In the book, people three people portray the Trinity. Um, why did you choose to represent God that way? God the Father was easy. I was trying to get as far away from my heritage of the old white grandfather characters I could. God the Father in her was the God I've experienced in my life, not the God I grew up with. I knew these um, women who get in your face and tell you the truth because they love you. Jesus got to be himself. The spirit throughout the Hebrew scriptures is feminine, so I played with that. Most of my damage came from men, and God in strictly paternal language was almost impossible to access without the connection to abuse, damage, and hurt. The dominating, destructive, masculine persona of God was inhibitive. I tampered with my people's paradigm, but overwhelmingly, people instantly got it. They knew I wasn't trying to define God. So he has published some other books since, but the way I see it, is this is a very broken broken kid who is on the mission field and um it's unfortunate that that happened and so it, it's to me it's a book of pain it's just complete pain in in it you can just feel the agony um even though the story is not his the story is not the story of his childhood but there's pain all through the story and um, so he must have been very, very broken. So personally, I, I mean, I can, it clearly doesn't line up with biblical truths. And now that I have read about his, um, you know, abuse and everything, it makes sense as to why he didn't um, make God male because he was abused by males. And you know, a lot of people can't see God as loving because they had a male in their lives that was not loving. So that makes sense, but you know, it depends on what eyes you, you see it through when you read the book. Um, don't read it for a theological, you know, exact theological, you know, interpretations. You know, he's, he, his story is one of loss, so I would love to hear about his relationship with God now and if he has one and how he views God. So, um, I personally didn't really like the book much as far as a Christian, you know, book. Um, if it's just a story on its own, it's very interesting. That's my take on it. Uh, you guys can think what you like. You know, a lot of people are into New Age these days and universalism. Not me. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So, it's just too far off base for, for me. Um, and some people will say, well, the Bible is a starting point. And I'm like, no, the Bible's not a starting point. The Bible is the point. It's the book that you stick with. It's not a jumping off point into other things. That is not what it's supposed to be. So unfortunately, that's kind of what this book did. Anyway, you guys take care. Read it. Don't read it. Um, that's my take on it. And you can do with it what you will. But I will keep praying for you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.